Kid Koala has established himself as a respected performer, film composer, theater producer, author, and visual artist. His career began as a scratch DJ in 1994, rapidly growing a cult fan base due to his virtuosic skills. He has toured with Radiohead, Arcade Fire, The Beastie Boys, A Tribe Called Quest, Mike Patton, Jack Johnson, DJ Shadow, and the Preservation Hall Jazz Band. He has done it all. His latest album, Creatures of the Late Afternoon, is what Eric Sand calls a journey through some of my favorite musical universes through the turntables. Hi, Eric. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm really excited to have you on the show today. Um, So just going to get it out of the way. The reason I'm calling is because I wanted to share with you Mm -hmm. that your album is the number one album on CKUA's top 30 chart this week. What? Yeah. How? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know how charts work. Does that mean the DJs are playing it or people are requesting it? I don't Both. know. How does... Both. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So people love lo- are loving the album. They love what you do. Um, and you've just been getting lots of spins this week. So oh, it's kind of exciting yeah. and well-deserved, I should say. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So first off, who are the creatures? Who are the creatures? Yeah. There's a whole slew of creatures, actually. There's amphibians crustaceans mammals reptiles <laughs> uh, i was watching a lot of nature documentaries okay. during the pandemic with my daughters and learning about all these wonderful creatures that exist on our planet and then uh at the end of each episode there was always this warning of how few there were mm. actually left or how the species existence expect- yeah. expectancy of um each of these uh, creatures and it got actually was quite a somber tone note at the end of each episode even though my daughter and i were just really enjoying you know how Mm -hmm. these creatures work live and find food etc and so that was really the catalyst that brought that concept into the the um album so the idea of creatures of the late afternoon man it's like okay if your time on the planet as a species Mm. some of these creatures are on Actually, all of them are on the endangered species list. And and I'm not laughing about that. I'm actually was worried about that. And, yeah. And yeah. as I dug more into it, I realized, wow, every everything, it's just so fragile. The biodiversity, humans included. I mean, nothing like yeah. a pandemic to kind of show you that, how it's all connected somehow. And uh, so, yeah, that was one of the sort of touchstones. You know, I, I think it's the reality of our environment and the creatures and the living things uh, that we're all precarious and connected is really an important theme um, that we need mm-hmm. to think about and consider. And I really appreciate how you've invited your listeners to consider it. You know, it's it's not like you're hitting people over their head, but you're kind of inviting them just to be like, Hey, think about this. What's uh, this is something you should be thinking about, you know? Yeah. Um, It's very cool. I think because of the internet, I think because of how we're all connected that way and we're getting all this information, even during a pandemic, still finding ways to connect. It became pretty clear to me that, Oh yeah, these creatures, these fictitious creatures based on real creatures. (laughs) as they are characters on the album was more like, okay, let's give them all musical instruments and have them start bands and make songs and talk about their um, situation and, and how, how that organized itself as the story started to congeal in my mind, it became this idea of, uh, okay, it's not until we all band together that it actually becomes something a sunnier tomorrow. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Know? Yeah. That's very cool. I I like how your brain thinks. Uh, I can tell you're a very visual <laughs> and creative person. And, you know, when I was checking out the album and, and um, you know, doing some research and stuff, I was like, what? There's two LPs. What? It's a board game. I was like, what is this? Tell me a little bit about that. <laughs> what's, what's that all about? Yeah, I mean, I've always enjoyed the process of designing packaging mm-hmm. for albums, and I thought it would be fun to make an interactive vinyl. It's not just storage for the album tracks. Of course, the album tracks are on each side of the double disc set, but after, there's a lock groove on each disc, and 
if you skip over that lock group, that is quote hidden tracks. And these are separate tracks that are not on the digital album. It's just mm -hmm. on the vinyl because it comes with the board game and they're meant to score certain moments in the board game. Oh my so gosh. if you land on a certain square, you're supposed to queue up one of these board game tracks and it acts like a, a soundtrack or a timer to that moment in the game. And it was just a fun way of bringing that musical dimension into the, the board wow. game experience also. But I thought, hey, the vinyl is there and I, I could squeeze like another couple yeah. minutes of audio on each side here. Let me use that and cut a few bands of um, game specific, you know, board game tracks <laughs> that, that that essentially, you know, help bring the energy up or the or the yeah. urgency up. Imagine like a Jeopardy theme, but you know, funkier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's incredible. I feel like I just got a glimpse mm. into your beautiful brain and I could imagine you being like a young boy, like 10 years old and like dreaming, you know, in your world. I feel like this is, you've always been this way. I get that feeling. Is that true? I think so. I mean, I've always tried to make adventures happen, even if it's just sitting you know, at a blank yeah. piece of paper, with yeah. a pen. <laughs> I could always escape into the visual art world or uh, a storytelling world and follow through. And then I think with creatures, it was really that I was painting a lot. Actually, all the creature cards, I think there's 150 of them that you get with the, the board game. Each of those was a canvas. I started painting that at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, my daughter was here painting too. She's actually more prolific than I am. But as time went on, as the months went on, I, I, the actual workspace was populated with all these mm -hmm. canvases of these musical instrument playing creatures. <laughs> and so when I walked over into the studio, you know, their spirit yeah. was kind of there with me and I had to channel them sort of like okay well if if this stick bug was on on a drum kit what kind of drum beat would it play or you know if this desert rain frog <laughs> was you know, playing bass what kind of bass line would it write and it just gave me a, a bit of a muse you know um mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. to kind of follow and and see what would happen there wow incredible Thank you so much. It's been like so delightful uh, just getting a glimpse into how your how your mind works. <laughs> I would love to play a tune from the album. Can you maybe pick one and and uh, and tell us a little bit about it? Oh, wow. Let me see here. What track should we play? I mean, you tell I mean, the, <laughs> you're the one that's telling me to <laughs> starting over there. Which one? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, things are going to change. Oh, perfect. Uh, it features a singer I met from Pomona, California, and she's an amazing artist. And the second I heard her records and her voice, I said, oh, it'd be great to get her to feature on this track because she has that kind of right girl energy that, yeah. that the track yeah. needed. So that's uh, yeah, that's things are going to change. OK, wicked. From the number one album, Creatures of the Late Afternoon by the ever creative and ingenious Kid Koala, this is Things Are Gonna Change. <laughs> 